I said at the top of the show I was going to ask uh, why we send out such sort of confusing and, uh, and uh, double-think type messages to young women in this country. You've got... Uh, if you go back to the BAFTAs at the weekend, you had women slagging off other women mm -hmm. for the fashion choices they made as they went down the red carpet. I mean, I thought this would have gone out with Joan Rivers, just... but there you go. Uh, we had the brilliant uh, Labour MP, Tracy Brabin, trolled relentlessly uh, for wearing an off-the-shoulder dress to the Commons. I mean, really. I mean, <laughs> really. She said she'd been called over social media a slag, <gasps> hungover, a tart, about to breastfeed, a slapper, drunk or banged over a wheelie bin. Oh. This is to a, to a, a member of Parliament. Mm. And then um, the other bit which really sort of caught my caught me really I suppose was 12 months after the the grid girl scandal that uh, saw a ban on sort of sexy women holding brollies over f1 drivers the daily mail today that champion of women's rights asked why you got women dressed in leather cat suits playboy bunnies and bavarian maids at a huge gambling conference in london this week i mean we could worry couldn't we the daily mail could worry about the rise in problem gamblers and run stories about that <laughs> but it's uh, what women wear that seems to bother them most I can't believe we're still doing this, decades after I first complained. Um, I'm going to turn to Dr Jessica Taylor for research and uh, for, um, for guidance on this. She's an academic uh, researcher who, who's been looking into victim blaming and the self-blame of women. In fact, has a new book coming out at the end of April called Why Women Are Blamed for Everything, which is a great title. And I'm delighted to say Dr Jessica joins us on the line now. Good afternoon. Thank you. Afternoon. Well, lo lovely talking to you. And I have to say, I I I'm looking forward to picking up your book when it comes out. Um, presumably, you're going to be covering some of the issues that I've just raised. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I wanted to write a book that looked at all of the different ways that we encourage society and individuals to blame women and girls um, for... I guess, everything. It is a bit of a contentious title. Well, I mean, yeah, was... maybe not <laughs> listen, listen, I, I, I could I could say, yeah, but what about white working class men or, or, or indeed just white men, uh, the, these poor put upon fellows? But I think yeah, I think you've got a good case here. Um, let's um, have we always blamed women and young and girls? Um, in, so in my opinion, yes, mm -hmm. I think that we've done it for a long time. I think that it is um, present across all countries, all cultures, all languages. We do it in slightly different ways, which is what you're picking up on. So you've noticed that there's almost this, I guess, a dichotomy where yes. you can be um, blamed for wearing something, I don't know, that's like not feminine enough, and yep. then you can be blamed for having too much skin Absolutely. Out, and Exactly that. Yeah. The, 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 the paper seems to be, oh, isn't it dreadful how people have had to go at Tracy Brabin for what she's worn? And then there's, isn't it dreadful what these women are wearing at the gambling conference? It's exactly that. Yeah, I agree. Do you know there's a really interesting theory on this, um, which, is called, which is about the um, way that we encourage girls from a very young age to be, I'm sorry about this language, but it's sexy but not a slot. So right. sexy but not a slag, right? So, And the point of that is that Women and girls are told from an early age that they're supposed to be beautiful, they're supposed to be desirable, they're supposed to be attractive and sexy, but not too sexy yep. because then you're asking for it. Yep. Mm. And so you sort of walk this tightrope your whole life about, do I look attractive enough to fit in with society, but have I got too much skin out to the point where I'll then be blamed for whatever is done to me? Mm. Can I ask, who is responsible for these attacks on women is it i know this might sound daft to some people but is it the male patriarchy because some might say and i've i've even heard it in the talk radio office this morning this earlier morning that uh, that w women can be enemies of women well, that's what i think oh well let, let, I, let, go on jessica yeah no I, I agree so we we know that the origins of it are from patriarchal control and culture but that doesn't mean that women aren't also they can internalise that misogyny and, and they can blame women at the same rate. So my research found that men and women actually blame women at the same rate. There's no difference between the way men and women will blame women and girls for things like domestic violence, being a victim of sexual assault. And we used to think that women had, like, higher empathy for other women, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And women will show that misogyny towards other women and will attack them and blame them at the same rate men do. Can I ask you your own personal feelings, if I may, um, about, say, the F1 grid girls? I, 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 I know women that worked as F1 grid girls and they're not happy that they're out of jobs. Exactly. But at the same time... It was sexist. But yeah. 
I think the way I think right the way it looks to me and all, lots of different jobs like that is almost like the women are like this ornament to the men that are doing something really cool. It's like whoa, look at these blokes! They're driving these really cool fast cars, and then they have to have a sexy, scantily clad woman holding an umbrella. But like that's an umbrella stand. But we've, end, we've ended up, though, women with women without them. work. But the women want to be those women. The women want to be trophies. The women, though, the people that are Do there. Do they? Well, or have they been conditioned to feel like that? Well, no, but some, some, yeah, maybe, I suppose. I suppose that is an argument in itself, but I believe that people want to be admired, you know, by certain types of people, by men, Possibly you know. because they... But uh, Jessica was but just saying how we condition young girls from birth. Mm. Oh, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. Is it, it, do you agree? Is it conditioning, Jessica? Or, or could it be that actually... These women wanted to be Want out to there be wearing beautiful. sexy clothes, showing off a bit of skin, but not too much because you, you just you can all look, the things but you can't you're... touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you uh, both of you are right. Okay. So the the issue is that we are conditioned very early on. So there was research um, that looked at when women and girls start to self-sexualize, and what that means is when you start to look at yourself and think, "Am I sexy enough? Am I attractive yeah. to other people?" And um, a, quite a while back, maybe 10, 15 years ago. We used to start self-sexualizing at about 12 to 13 years old. Right. So more recent now. research, yeah, more recent research has shown that girls start to self-sexualize between four and seven. What? Yeah, it's like, I can ima- I can see that. Four. Yeah. Even my four-year-old yeah. daughter says to me, "Mummy, do I look nice in this?" You know, because you're you say you, you don't mean to, but as a mum, I say, "Oh, don't you? Oh, that looks really pretty. That oh, that looks." So then she comes up to me and puts something else on. Says, "Mummy, do I look pretty?" You know, what, what is that my fault? Well, do you do you often if it was a son, a boy, you're not going to say I tell him oh, he you looks look... handsome. Would you? Yeah, absolutely. Or nice? No, I'd say he looks handsome. Because I because sometimes I say to my nephew, "Oh, don't you look pretty?" I mean, handsome. <laughs> so I have to use the male equivalent. That's how I, you know. Where where are we going, Jessica, as as a society? Because the last twenty years or so, there's been a lot of good feminist stuff out there, and and some stuff, you know, reform and review, and, and but at the same time, if you look at F1 Grid Girls, they've gone, but we still have scantily clad women in sexy attire promoting gambling. Yeah, yeah, I guess because some of that. Some of that um, is like what I would say is tokenism. It's like ban the F1 grid girls because oh no, that's bad now. But then, it, but the actual misogyny and the societal sexism and the sexualization and objectification of women and girls it just continues. It'll just find another route. It evolves into something else. And you know, we know that, for example, more and more children and talking about this socialization impact. More and more young children are watching porn. We know that. The NSPCC released a report a few years back that said around 50% of 10-year-olds are watching porn. Really and we know that, you know, that has a huge impact on the way we see ourselves and the way we see other people. There's still a huge, I guess, part of society that encourages women and girls to want to be desired and want to be objectified. So that's not going anywhere, and I don't see it going anywhere. I do feel like every now and then we do these types of conversations that are really important, but we don't really dig at what it means or where it's coming from or the impact that it's actually having on everybody's psychology. That, that you, I think you could extend that complaint, Jessica, that, and it's a rightful complaint to just about every major moral and ethical decision I see played out in the pages of our newspapers. It's, mm. it, it, it's, everything is so ephemeral, isn't it? So, it but everything's oh, look, so yeah. accessible you know, now, with, obviously, with the internet and everything. But it, can't get away from it. How can you get your child no, away from these images? Well, my point is, you know, today we're worrying about women, tomorrow we'll be worrying about children, the day mm. after that we'll be worrying yeah, about Brexit, yeah. the day after... It's, it's like sort of Trumpism, isn't it? He says something outrageous. When he first went into office, he says something outrageous, the whole world is going, oh, my God, what Donald Trump said is outrageous. The next day, oh, what Donald Trump said was outrageous. That day, he says something else that was outrageous. The day after that, he does. And mm. by the time you get to Friday, you've forgotten about Monday. Yeah. yeah. It's, oh, oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's very difficult. Um, Jessica, uh, did you come to any conclusions in your book? I don't want to do a spoiler alert here ahead of publication, <laughs> but uh, did you come to any sort of uh, sort of clear views? Yeah, um, I developed sort of models that can explain all of the different societal factors that encourage all of us to blame women and girls for being subjected to sexual harassment and violence and assault and the ways that that happens. There's also some stuff in there around how we actually encourage women and girls to blame themselves from an early age so when they are abused or harassed or even when they're talking to other women and girls it, it's the self-blame is so deeply embedded that it's just almost like a default reaction oh okay. this must be my fault it yeah. must have been what i was wearing it must have been something i did 
and 100% of the blame sits with the offender of that particular crime. And yet, you know, a lot of what we're doing in society is getting individuals um, to, well, women and girls, to take responsibility for male violence. And so the book talks about just the so many different, really insidious, careful ways that we encourage women and girls to take responsibility for sexual harassment, for trolling, for abuse, for, you know, rape and stuff like that. So it's, um, I, I imagine, it's going to be one of those books that people go, uh, it was really interesting, but now I'm very depressed. <laughs> <laughs> so does it have a sense of girl power in there or not? It depends what you mean by girl power. If you mean, yay, let's get our boobs out for empowerment, no, that's not No, I mean, like, people supporting each other. Oh, absolutely. Supporting each other. And, and also about making sure that we provide services that never, ever encourage women and girls to sort of look at themselves and go, oh, you're right. Maybe if I hadn't have dressed like that, maybe if I hadn't have done that, then none of this would be happening to me because a lot of our services do that at the moment.